So you got this scary email from AWS telling you that you are running a deprecated Kubernetes version on your cluster. Let me show you how you can upgrade your cluster to version 1.23. Hello and welcome to Shim on Ops. So today we're gonna perform an EKS upgrade guide to version 1.23. So we're going to understand how does upgrade works at EKS, how do they do it, and what to do before upgrading in order to make sure that we do not have any workloads that are using deprecated APIs that are going to be removed in the next version and they're just gonna stop working. So I'm gonna demonstrate some open source tools that can help us identify and fix those issues. And of course, we're gonna perform a control plane upgrade. I'm gonna do it using EKS Cattle. And finally, we're gonna upgrade the node groups. So let's get started. Okay, so you're here, you wanna upgrade your cluster, you go into the console and you see all those errors and warnings and like, you gotta upgrade, you gotta upgrade your cluster. So first let's understand how does EKS work regarding upgrades. So first of all, AWS uh, holds up to four versions backwards compatibility. And every version has an end of date support. So for version 1.22, it is June 4th, 23. So you might ask yourself, so wait, what is going to happen on June 4th? So <laughs> what happens at the end of support date is actually existing control planes are automatically updated by AWS. Congratulations, <laughs> they're gonna do it for you. Not only that, but you can ask yourself, so what is going to happen to the managed node groups? And the managed node groups are not going to be upgraded, which is interesting because you're going to have a mismatched version between your node group and your control plane. But this is okay because it is backwards compatible. But note that if you still don't upgrade then it's gonna happen in the next version as well, then you're gonna find yourself with two versions back and it's not a best practice by any means. This is unless you're running on Fargate and Fargate actually does automatically upgrade the node groups by himself. So one of the things to take into consideration when upgrading Kubernetes versions is you want to make sure if your API versions that you're using for your workloads are actually going to be supported in the next version because maybe you or your developers are using a deprecated version and in the next upgrade it's going to be removed. So you're going to have workloads that are just going to, the Kubernetes API is going to be like, I don't know what this command does because this API does not exist anymore. So in order to do so, uh, there's this great uh, project called Cube No Trouble. It is fairly popular on GitHub. And what it does, it allows you to scan a cluster in order to uh, see if it is using any deprecated versions. So this is what we're going to do now. So I'm gonna open my terminal. And if we look at cube end, uh, you just run it and then it automatically assumes the version uh, that you uh, run the cluster with and it also takes the existing cube cattle connected cluster and it runs the check for you. So in this case it ran it against 1.22, I can run it uh, against the 1.23 and then it uh, uh, searches whether some deprecated APIs are being used within your cluster. So in this case pod security policy, it is a very wide uh, a topic that I'm also going to cover in my next videos is deprecated. So let's say you encounter using an API of a deprecated version. So I happen to have one here and uh, this one is using an older one. It's called the networking V1 beta. It was deprecated actually in 1.22. So how can you fix that? There is a neat thing um, with Kubernetes that they actually have a cube cattle convert plugin that allows you after you perform an installation to supply a file with deprecated APIs and it will auto convert it for you into a new API. So let's look at how it works. So if I go here and I do cube cattle convert minus F and I give it the file, you will see that it is actually outputting a new API version, and not only that, uh, you will notice, for example, here, it is, uh, in, in this case, using backend, service name, service port. And here it actually changed it into service, 
an underscore and then it, it has a new property name and a property port and then number and it actually performed this change for me so I did not have to go and manually discover everything so this is how you can go by and check that so there is this great article by Sysdig about what's new in 1.23 I will link it in the video below but um, in terms of deprecated APIs and removed APIs you can see a full list here um, and again, I think that when upgrading a cluster, this is one of the major problems that can be caused. Um, another thing that we can do in order to help our engineers make sure that they do not use a deprecated APIs or go ones that will be removed in the next version is we want to notify them and possibly block workloads from doing it uh, in the future. So in order to do so, we can use a cool uh, tool called the tree. So uh, we can install it on our cluster and it is very easy. We just copy the Helm installation instructions. And this allows us to install the tree on the cluster. And what this will do, this will uh, actually notify. And if you set it to block, block any new workload that is trying to spin up on your Kubernetes that is not compliant with a specific version. So you could say, I don't want any workloads that are going to be deprecated in 1.25 to run on my cluster, or I don't want any workloads in 1.26 with APIs that are going to be removed. And this way you can, you know, prevent those issues from, from the get go before they even happen. So once you perform the installation, sorry, it's, it's going to scan the cluster. Um, and if we go into the policies tab and go into deprecation, you can choose any version you would like. You can actually see which removed APIs exists at which version, and you can actually uh, enable a policy to block any workload from using this in the future and to also notify your engineers. So it's also a, a really cool utility that can help you avoid those problems Okay, so the moment is here, let's perform the upgrade. So one option is obviously to go and just click on update now and do it from the UI, but I really want to do it from the terminal. So in order to do so, we're gonna use uh, EKS Cuttle and it has the option to uh, perform an uh, upgrade to a cluster. So this is what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm just gonna put my command here. So it is uh, EKS Cuttle upgrade cluster minus minus name the name of my cluster then i'm gonna go version 1.23 this is the one that we're upgrading to uh, eu west one and now um, eks cattle is going to perform the upgrade for us and uh, of course we're gonna do approve for it because you gotta approve it and this is going to start the upgrade from the control plane from 1.22 to 1.23 so now, if we look at the console, we can see that our uh, cluster has entered an updating state and this is gonna take approximately 10 minutes, I assume. Okay, so we're back and yes, it took 10 minutes and uh, now our, our cluster is upgraded. So let's go and see uh, K9S, if you don't know, that's a great utility. And now we chose us version 1.23. So now let's look at the console and see what it tells us so here if i refresh i see that our con control plane version is 1.23 that is great um, and everything seems to be working fine but there are new versions available for our node group but let's try to update it from the console this time so if i click on update i can choose if it's a rolling upgrade or first upgrade and I'm going to do a rolling upgrade and now it is being up, uh, upgraded. Um, so we're going to let it run. Um, and what it should do, it should do a rolling upgrade. It means that it should schedule new nodes, get them up with the new version, get the other ones off and do the migration this way. So now we can see that uh, we used to have two nodes. Now we have uh, three nodes. So it's actually spinning up a new node. It is still not ready. It is in the updating stage and the desired size is two. So now it's going to spin up the new nodes 
here uh, already we have one that is uh, spinned up which is a, a new one in a, using the new version um, I'm using spot instances which is obviously great because it's really really cheap but the downside it can sometimes take more time to launch um, the nodes um, still not as much time as Fargate which I really love Fargate but it really takes a lot of time with Fargate so let's continue to monitor the process now if we actually explore the nodes so you can see that the old nodes have a version 1.22 kubelet version and if we look at the new node we can see that uh, this one was created four minutes ago and it is running a uh, kubelet version 1.23 so this is the new one using Linux architecture um, it is really really nice they added some new UI features here I really like it okay so we're coming to finishing this update really 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 soon we already have two of our uh, new nodes up and now it's gonna uh, evict the old one so let's see how it looks like from a uh, k9s in terms of a uh, of nodes let's see oh. so yeah everything seems to be running normally uh, and we're just uh, performing the upgrade Great, so if we look at the instances that we have now, we can see that their age is like 4-7 minutes because what happened is that new nodes spin up and then the workloads move to them uh, so they had to reinitiate. So now if we look at the console, uh, you will see that, um, congratulations, uh, Kubernetes version 1.23, uh, the node group is up. If we look at the details of the, uh, of the node group, we can see that the AMI version is 1.23. So congratulations, you've performed a successful upgrade to version 1.23 of the control plane and the node group. So this is how you upgrade your cluster to version 1.23. Now, a uh, disclaimer, things can still break and, you know, take this tutorial as a nice uh, reference, but, you know, in production, things sometimes break. Another best practice that is out there is actually spinning up a new cluster with the new version and then migrating all the workloads to the new cluster and then sunsetting the old cluster. So that's another option that you can use. I've put all the links in the video below, so feel free to go and, and use them. And please like and subscribe for new videos. Thank you very much for watching.